So now it's time for us to convert all of this into our magical, super amazing digital asset with the push of a button to convert uh, this hide field to a game asset. Now, the we're not gonna include everything immediately. We'll start, we'll, we'll do it gradually this time. And the first section that we're gonna include in our HDA is basically just that part. Let me just grab this as well. So we're just gonna start with this portion of it. I'm gonna back this and let's convert this to a digital asset called height field to game asset. Right click, go create digital asset, height field to choose the HDA folder, accept accept. Now we have our HDA and let's start taking care of the parameters. In terms of inputs and outputs, we're going to leave this everything at one and let's dive inside. So the first section that we're going to look at is the switch. Remember we had a switch that basically allow us to choose if we want to consider the trees or not. And this is the main height field mass by feature that's going to be uh, determining how our rocks are formed and we're going to be wanting to expose these options as well the slope options so i'm going to go here to the parameter section i'm going to start by creating a folder called rock layer and rock layer next we're going to add that toggle this toggle is going to be for the considered trees and we're also going to be grabbing the parameters from the I feel by mask feature masking and we basically just want this the slope so we can yeah let's let's just grab these put this inside I'm going to separate them with the separator here and I think we can hit apply. Let's go outside and if we select our HDA we'll see we have the slope parameters for creating the rock layer which is going to affect everything and we have this considered trees which I'm going to copy live inside and here base relative references. Going out again I'm going to make sure to put this at one and what else regarding the output that's another thing we're gonna want to be controlling for now the output it's just going to be this okay this is all we're going to be considering for now and let's make sure we have that output output connected this is what we're going to be outputting and looking at for now we're also going to be having a switch because we will be able to choose exactly what we want to visualize. The main goal of this digital asset is to generate files, meaning to export the FBX and render out the um, normal maps, occlusion, and all and those extra textures that we did on on cops. Let's apply, accept. I'm gonna go out, right click, save node type and match current definition. That's gonna close it. And we have the beginning of our HDA where we have the ability to control if we want to consider trees or not. And we can also control how much of the slope we want to be, um, we want it to be rock. So we can say we don't want that much slope or we want uh, the default balance. Let, let's leave it for now like this. We've tested this out before. Now it's just in a, an HDA format. Now, um, the next step, the next phase of our process, let's, I'm gonna pull this, everything up. So we have this height field remapped. And after this, we're gonna be converting the height field to geometry, cleaning it up with the uh, attribute delete. Here on the convert height field, 
I think for now, let's just leave the density at half to make it faster, 0 0.5, just so it's faster to go over everything. Then we're clipping low. And then we're cleaning everything up all the way up to here. This is basically the process of converting the height field to geometry and cleaning, cleaning up that geometry. So let's grab all of this and take it inside our HCA. Let's use it in our HCA. Going to be breaking a few things here and there, but it's not really an issue for now. Let's grab all of this, control X, allow editing of contents, dive inside, and let's so add all those, all that process here, control V. So this goes there. Let's grab all these and kind of align them like this and grab all of these and, and then here, keeping this more or less organized. This is always going to be the last thing and along with this. So at this point, we will have our geometry. Let's keep this, keep this as our second input for a switch. Switch output and we'll have for now, two options. We can either have a look at the height field or we can have a look at the high res geometry. Let's go out, right click, type properties, and we'll add here um, an ordered menu. Put it right on top of everything. And here we'll have one is going to be to have a look at the height field. Zero is going to be to have a look at the height field and one is going to be to have a look at high res geo. Apply. Let's right click. Doesn't have a label, so let's change that. So it's going to be output. The reason why I add the my just make sure that this doesn't uh, go into conflict with something that might already have the output associated with it. So let's hit apply, accept, not for now, just apply, copy, parameter, go inside, and we can paste it here, paste relative references. And now if we go out, let me just pull this here, and we can see either the height field or the high resolution geometry. Cool. Now, everything's going well. Let's hit accept, save this out, save no type, no problem so far. Now, from this point on, on things are gonna get a bit more complicated. And the reason why is because when you create an HCA, we need to be careful about things, the way we reference things. Right now, for instance, um, if we think about how the, um, let's start with RopNet baking maps, that's fine. Uh, let's start with this. Inside here, this Rop network, where we're baking the normals, we are referen referencing the objects based on an absolute path. And whenever we create this HDA, this path, is not going to match. Um, if I create another HCA on a different um, on a different geometry node, then with a different name, then this is no longer going to be valid. So the way we're going to do this is we need to fix the way we're referencing the objects. We also need to have one place on our HCA where we define where we want to save our textures and our model, our FBX file. Okay, so that's the main thing we need to, to solve. So let's grab all of this, Control C or Control X, sorry, go inside 
and let's include this as well. Control V. This goes here. These are the remaining parts. And this shouldn't give us any problem. So we, we're shrinking it so that we can uh, do the, um, make sure that the baking goes well. And after that, we create the poly reduced version. Okay, so this is our shrinked high resolution. This is gonna be our shrinked low resolution. And then we'll be reversing the shrink. It goes back and let's leave this aside. And here we have our ROP network, which has uh, this. So I don't think we're gonna have any problems. Let's just include this as a third option here. And this is gonna be our output. Let's go up and here, let's go to type properties, parameters. And let's give ourselves that option up here on the menu, having another token called two, uh, token two with the label game asset, something like that. Apply. Okay, so now we start getting those references. Uh, as you can see, we're, there's the material node, even though I, I'm not going through it, uh, it detects that the material is uh, actually referring to something that's not uh, there, unable to resolve none, you save anyway, okay. And if I go in, if I remove this, control X and bring it outside, control V, then we should be okay. If I, let me hit accept, okay. Save node type. And we didn't get the, the warning, so we're pre we should be good. Match current definition. No more warnings, meaning that uh, this is working properly. Let me zoom out. We have the height field, the high resolution geometry, and then we should have our game asset, which for now is just a reduced poly version. 